What's up, man? Missed you guys. It's been a while since we uh, got around to recording an episode. So today, got a little something different. Working on the S2000, making a titanium exhaust because I had a side exit on the turbo setup, but according to the SCCA rules, I wouldn't have been able to track the car competitively against him. And that's pretty much the goal for today. Well, the goal for 2021. I want to be able to race against the Datsun once I'm running. So the first thing I guess on the list is we're gonna go ahead and weld a complete exhaust from the back of the turbo to the back of the vehicle. And it's gonna be completely titanium. I wanna thank Vibrant for partially sponsoring this uh, modification because they were kind enough to send me all the raw materials to make this exhaust modification uh, properly. So thank you, that's greatly appreciated. Yeah, we're gonna get straight to work. Josh is gonna be here to help give some tips on how to weld titanium, certain cups to use, and some of the in and outs when it comes down to welding because titanium can be a little tricky. So luckily we have him here to help spread some good knowledge. He also shows you how to like anodize and you know what? I'm already giving too much information. You're not gonna even wanna watch. And this might even be weird today, but we'll see. I brought my tube sander if you want me to polish it. Could look better, like Tim's. Right, I guess with titanium comes in like raw. Uh, it depends who you buy it from. You can get it raw like this. I guess this would be considered raw, which is decent. It looks fine. But if you polish it, if you buff it like a, like a barrel of a BBS wheel or something, then you can get it really looking good. That's what we did to Tim's, right? We. Just pipe sanded it, kind of like a satin finish, which is probably what I'm gonna do to this. It looks a little better, a little more uniform, and if you do color it, <laughs> it'll help that pop a lot more. How do you go about figuring out, like, what do you need to make, uh, I guess, your own custom exhaust? Because I know Vibrant, they have, like, a lot of products. Yeah, there's a lot of bends, 90s, 45s, straights, flex pipes. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff that you have to consider. But uh, ultimately, just look at how your factory exhaust routes. Usually, if somebody messages me and says, "Hey, I want to stock it, or I want to, I want you to make me an exhaust," first I'll say, "What kind of noise are you looking for? What's your budget?" And that can help me determine sizing or the amount of mufflers or resonators. And after that, I will usually, honestly, Google the model. Say like a Corvette 2006 Corvette. I'll Google that. I'll Google the stock exhaust. See how that routes. That way, I don't have to see the car. I don't have to be under the car and it just gives you a good idea of the routing that you have to take. So I basically did exactly what I just told you guys to do, and I, Xavier said I want a titanium exhaust, I can't run the side exit anymore, kind of tired of it, kind of can't run it for the class I want to race in. I said, cool, that's fine. So he hit up Vibrant and worked out a deal with them, and I tried to put together a very accurate list, which ended up being not so accurate, but... It was close enough. Yeah, so you need, there are some specialty flanges that you'll need. These are generic V-bands, which will go to generic pipes. But if you look at Xavier's GTX Turbo, it has a very specific discharge flange. And uh, Vibrant, I don't think Vibrant makes that, but there's other brands that do make titanium V-band flanges specific to turbos like uh, his GTX 30. It's on a full turbo back titanium exhaust. A little dusty right now from the last time y'all probably seen my vehicle. So sometimes what I'll do if the turbo, sometimes big Borg Warner turbos or something else will come with a crazy, it's called a Marmon flange. Marmon? And it works. Yeah, Marmon. It's, it's a very weird, it's like a tractor flange, honestly. <laughs> tractor trailers or tractors. And uh, I don't know if I could even find a titanium discharge flange for, to match that. So I would cut the whole flange off the housing. Same thing I did at Tim's. And I would get a just a generic one of these with a stainless one side, titanium the other side, weld the stainless to the cast turbo housing, and you can go from there and that'll save you saves you time if you can do that. Oh okay. Now I see what you're talking about, because you were talking about that earlier. Yeah, that's what I did at Tim's. It just it makes it easier rather than finding a specific GTX 30 titanium discharge flange for a hundred dollars in titanium, which is what it is. So this is how I 
put a nice finish on the parts that I make usually. I think you guys have probably seen it in the 240 exhaust video where we put a finish on this before we burned it. And uh, it's just a generic tube and pipe sander. A lot of, you'll see these a lot and uh, honestly people who make like handrails and stuff like that because it goes around the tube or pipe that you're polishing and it can, it can get probably 270 degrees around it at once. Just saves time and you're not gonna do that on a belt sander. So it's kind of a specialized tool to help you accomplish a simple task. Yeah, we'll do a little before. Not bad, honestly, but I just like putting a nice, a nice grain, a satin grain on it. The more polished you can get it, the better it's gonna look if you do decide to torch it or if you do anodize it. I got into anodizing recently. It's pretty awesome to do. You just need a decent power supply, water, and baking soda, and you can anodize titanium. Oh, you got yourself a little chemistry lab going yeah, on. A little meth there. lab going in my garage. <laughs> Didn't watch it too much breaking bad. But I'll start with a like a medium belt, and I'll switch to a finer belt. <laughs> Anyway, switch to a <laughs> finer belt. Uh, you can buy a tube that's already polished and you'll pay more for it. That's why if you wanna save a little bit of money, just buy it, buy it how it comes and do a little more work. Pay your fabricator generously and he will provide you with a nice part. Always gotta treat your fabricators right. A little chilly in here. Pretty much, Josh is gonna be making the whole exhaust and we'll get him to break down some more tips as the process goes along. Just wanted to stop in and give a little update on what's happening. So, yeah, we pretty much have everything for the car. Next up, I might start doing E85, but kind of waiting for it just to warm up a little bit because it's so cold in the shop. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Christmas. I got a pretty nice satin finish on it. Titanium and I mean all metals with TIG welding, prep is key. Take your time, prep it, get all the fingerprints off of it. Any weird marks that you're gonna see, if you burn or anodize any of this, any of these little weird marks, you're gonna see all that. It's gonna make your final product a little less professional looking, which I don't want. So start fresh and take your time. Okay. I just want to catch you on candy cam. <laughs> so I just bottled this flange. I wanted to try to go over some simple type tips at least, some basic titanium stuff. Uh, just stuff that I think would be helpful. The first thing, titanium needs a lot of gas coverage. Argon is what I use, is what everybody uses. So for aluminum, say I would weld. You can see my flow meter right here. Aluminum, honestly anywhere from like 20 to maybe 25. Titanium, I'm looking at like 45, 40. It's a lot more argon flow. Your post flow, meaning how much argon is flowing through this after the weld stops, okay. it's gonna be a lot longer. Just a little bit about welding cups and gas lenses and things like that for TIG welding. I don't know, I honestly, I don't know much about MIG welding or stick welding. All I do is TIG weld, so your guess is as good as mine on that stuff. But <laughs> for TIG welding, titanium, 
I mentioned it earlier, but you want a very big cup with a lot of gas coverage because the titanium is affected by oxygen and the environment a lot. So you always want to have this shielded and you want to follow your weld as you're going. You don't want to go like this. A lot of times you'll get in the habit where you're going along and your cup will, you, you won't, you'll forget to rotate it with the weld. So it'll be like this. But if you do that, then the back side of your weld is not getting any coverage as it cools. So you'll get that rainbow coloring that you don't want. Yeah, that's the one thing I saw when I was like researching. I mean, and for automotive stuff, if you see some rainbow colors on titanium from just the weld, not from coloring, obviously not from heat treating or anodizing, it's gonna be fine more than likely, as long as it's purged. And uh, purging is just running a line from your regulator. I have a very simple cheap setup here, but I have a Y valve coming off. One goes to the welder, that feeds my torch. This one goes to the part that I'm welding and it goes inside, I just unplugged it, but it'll go inside of this heat sink pushing argon up into the part. And then I have a silicone plug, which is like a powder coating plug, honestly. I have it in the part, probably down to here, since I don't need this whole thing to be filled with argon. So I'll put it down here, and then this whole part, well, this whole part of this whole part, or this little section will be filled with argon the whole time. And it'll be safe, no cracks, good penetration, good coloring. No uh, oxidation. Titanium gets a weird uh, white haze. It can even get like fuzzy kind of on the outside mm -hmm. if you get a uh, no pen or if you get a uh, bad gas coverage. So if you ever see a part that has crazy white haze on the inside of it and it's titanium, it's probably not back purged, which is uh, I feel like that would be a really prone to cracking a lot more than if it was purged. Terrible mistake to make when investing in it. Exactly. If you're gonna spend material. the money, spend a little bit more on argon. Spend a little bit more on a nice cup. I talked about it 15 times, but uh. Do I can tell cups are extremely important? Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> important. Uh, two cup makers that I use are Specialty Precision Welding, uh, made in the USA, and uh, Michael Furick, also made in the USA. These are super popular. This one's a little smaller than this, obviously. This is an 18. This is called a 12. It's called a FUPA 12, actually. <laughs> a FUPA. Yeah, it says it right on there. They have a BBW and a FUPA. Wow. But uh, yeah. The terminology related to- This is fine. To... A, a generally smaller, like a 12, is good for stainless. It's good. You can make this work for titanium easily, but the bigger the better, in a sense, because uh, it's easier to get good gas coverage. People always ask, not me personally, but I see it all the time. What are your settings on that weld? Or how do you do that? Or what welder do you have? Um, it's hard to give a real specific answer of, these are my exact settings, here you go. And you will get the same weld that I got. Like it's, it takes practice for one and different people like different settings. So, uh, I mean, I can give you a general overview of settings I use and it could help you out, I hope, but um, Say for this titanium weld I just did, I'll set the machine to probably 85 amps. Now, am I gonna use 85 amps to weld that? No, I don't need anywhere near that much, but I like to have more than I need in case I need to go a little faster or put a little more heat into the part. I have it there. I don't, I don't like setting it to only what I will max ever need because it, Sometimes you'll you're run into a situation, especially when you have a drill hooked up to a spinny thing, yeah. or you're like catching up to yourself, <laughs> or you're going too slow. And there's also um, pulse settings on welders, which would mean it pulses between high and a low amperage that you set, and that can help you with titanium, especially because it can help keep heat out of your part by pulsing between 15 amps and 80 amps. And you can set how long it goes to 15, how long it goes to 80, 
So if you ever see a video of somebody welding and it's going that is pulse. Some people call it cheating, which it's not. It's just a setting that welders have that they can utilize to make better parts. So I don't really think that's cheating. All right, killing it. You know I had to be a hot boy and uh, anodize the tip. Damn, just showing off how light the material is. Cut it. 